welcome everyone today we'll be uh, starting the course or the automation part of the course industrial robotics and automation okay so this lecture being the first lecture i would be just providing you the or i would be just be giving you glimpse to the introduction to automation part okay so uh, let's again uh, proceed and get started even before starting automation okay one thing should be clear and that is the difference between the mechanization and automation portion okay so uh, suppose i tell you this is the work a or most of you are actually confused going into the industries if you go to a shop floor okay and you see uh, some things getting lifted or some any other thing then again you are uh, there may be a question that may be popping into your head whether this is a mechanization of a part or whether this is an automation part okay so can i call a system an automated system or i can just call this system a mechanized system okay so first let us bring the clarity or let us bring to ourselves the exact difference between mechanization and automation okay so the figure in your right okay so let us see there is a weight okay let us assume uh, this weight is say suppose 100 kg okay and i have to lift it to a height of 500 cm that is 5 meters okay if i am lifting this weight say manually say suppose if four or five laborers they just uh, put a cloth over it or some other and they just try to lift it okay and just place it at a height 500 meter above it okay then what you will be calling this this is a manual lifting no this is not till now it's not mechanization it's just manual lifting your it is your labor work that you are doing okay now suppose i am lifting this with any mechanism say a lever mechanism or say suppose i have put some motors or any other uh, apparatus that i use here okay to lift it then that can be called as mechanization mechanization okay then can you call this automation if suppose i am lifting this up to say 100 kg this weight and if i am lifting it to 5 meters okay using any for example a lever mechanism or i am using some types of motors to just lift it can i call this as automation no so i am having both answers i am having yes and no okay so those of you who had said yes why can you just elaborate on it come on just try to interact i see i, I would only then i would be able to know okay what is this so somebody is saying if i am lifting this weight using any type of machines also suppose i have lifted this weight up to 500 cm that is 5 meters okay so can i call this automation because most of you have said mechanization some of them have said automation so uh, why i just want to hear why you have called it as automation some obvious answers would be because the lift uh, weight is getting lifted automatically isn't it so again let's go into the uh, definition okay so that this entire concept would be much much more clearer to you okay so before even going into the text part of it just let me tell you say this weight is 100 kg okay and you have to lift it to 5 meters above if suppose four or five persons do it then i would say this is a manual work i do the same work using some lever mechanism or any other machines just to lift it and say suppose again i have to bring it down then somebody again presses one button it comes down i would put that into a category of mechanization now imagine if suppose i have to continue this for 10 cycles okay and i have to stop it that means the weight has to lift up to a height of 5 meters stay there and once it reaches 5 meters it has to come down that becomes one cycle the moment it touches the ground again it goes up okay reaches its height of to 5 meters again comes down and this happens for around 10 cycles and all this thing happens automatically then that is a category 
where you will be placing it into the automation part of it. Yes. Okay. So again, uh, whatever I have said, the same thing is written here. It's mechanization. So it is a process of changing from working largely, okay, or exclusively by hand or with animals. Why is it an animals? For example, you are pulling something, okay, or uh, say a liver pulley mechanism is there. So uh, say you are uh, using some animals, say bullocks, to just pull something over a pulley, okay, and then lifting it. So even that force may be used. Okay, so they all are manual work. So if you replace those, okay, with that of uh, uh, using some types of machinery, then that would be known as mechanization. Again, use of machines either wholly or in part to replace the human or animal labor. Then again, that would be called as mechanization. And again, the third point, it still requires some human participation to provide information or the instruction. So uh, where does the third point fit into? Now, suppose if you have, a, as I told you in the example, there is a requirement that you lift this weight up to a height of 5 meters. Okay, the moment it reaches 5 meters, then again, you have to drop it down or you have to put it down and again, continue that cycle for 10 cycles, for example. Continue this process for 10 cycles. Then again, even if you are mechanizing it, okay, then there would be someone who would be pressing a lever or who would be pulling a lever to lift this again uh, when he sees that it reaches it up then he lowers it down when it uh, again uh, reaches to its lowest position again somebody pushes the button to again lift it up so again there are manual or there are human participations to provide informations or to provide input to the system to work okay so that fits into the category of mechanization automation okay so a technique of making an apparatus or a process or a system to operate completely automatically. Okay, that means, say same, same example, if this is to continue for 10 cycles, what would be required? You would be requiring a sensor at the top at the bottom, okay, to detect the end positions. Okay, so the moment the weight is lifted up to its desired height of 5 meters, a sensor would be sensing that, okay, the weight has reached or obtained its maximum position that would again trigger the downward movement and again thus when the cylinder or when the weight okay reaches the downward position again there will be a sensor to sense its uh, bottom most position and that would trigger its upward motion apart from that there will also be a counter mechanism that counts the number of cycles right and when this cycle reaches to a value of 10, if you have prefix that count, then again the entire system would stop. Okay, so if you can again reduce the human intervention, okay, up to a maximum possible limit, again I'm not saying completely, I would reiterate my statement, if you can reduce the manual intervention to a minimum possible limit, then that would fall or that task would fall into a category of automation. The last point being the significant substitution of mechanical, electrical or computerized action for human effort and intelligence. Okay, so again, human effort is getting substituted by mechanical system if you have uh, just uh, mechanized this process. What are the intelligence part on it? The placement of the sensors at the bottom position and at the top most of the position for this particular example that you can see on the right of the screen. Okay, so that whenever the load reaches, uh, reaches its upper limit, it senses, okay, and again the downward motion is triggered and vice versa. Okay, so that I think or I believe is the, uh, that this is much more clearer to you the difference between a manual work, a mechanized work and an automated work. Okay, so with this, uh, the difference being now much more clear between the mechanization and automation. Now we'll be focusing on the automation part of it. Okay, so uh, even again going before automation, okay, going much deep into the automation, I would just uh, need, okay, I would just uh, like you to just give me some inputs about what are the need for automation. This you also have covered in your uh, previous uh, lectures that uh, Dr. Arun has taken care in the uh, 
industrial robotics portion of it. So can I have some amount of inputs from your side? What are the need for automation? Why do you automate? Or where is automation needed? Any input input? speed and efficiency of production. Right. One part may be that. <laughs> Okay, so what, what else? What else? Repeatability. Repeatability. Good. Very good. What else? High precision. High precision. Absolutely correct. What else? Right. Complicated tasks. Right. Complicated tasks. For dangerous tasks. Exactly. For hazardous environment, for dangerous tasks. Okay. So, see again, uh, take an example. Uh, I usually give this example again and again. It's a very simple exam uh, example. Suppose you are having a pen assembly unit. Okay. So, yeah, basically you have your, say this pen. Okay. It has so many parts. Right. Or to be precise, it has four parts, one cap, one at the back. Okay. This part, then this is the body and the fourth is the refill. Now, suppose... I have a plant or I have a system where these four parts are getting produced and then the complete assembly of this pen is to be done manually. Okay, So a labor is sitting who is first inserting the lifil, then he is placing the back end cap. Okay, Finally, he is putting the cap to it and then placing it in the box. So say this work is being done manually. Okay, do you think if a labor is working for 8 hours a day, if say for the first 1 hour, okay, if he can assemble say around 120 pens or 180 pens, okay, by the time he reaches the 3rd or 4th hour, do you think his speed would remain the same? Gradually it would decrease, right? Why? Because the task is very much repetitive in nature. Okay, so it is very much re repetitive. Second, the chances of error increases as and when he starts to continue his work beyond the extra time. For example, say it, it is allotted to him 4 hours, he goes into the 5th hour, 6th hour. Okay, Even in the 2nd and 3rd hour, there is a possibility or there is a chance that the error would increase. For example, for some amount of pens, he must uh, not be able to tighten the back cap very uh, or uh, with the required strength. For some, he might forget the putting the cap in the front side. So again, the tasks that are very much repetitive in nature. Okay, that. Second, again, uh, not only repetitive, if suppose I want to have a much higher production rate, right? Instead of having uh, 180 pens to be assembled per hour, if suppose there is a demand for that and I want to scale up my production to say suppose 500 or to 1000 pens, still I would be requiring an automated systems. Right. So again, uh, repeatability is there, precision is there, quality is there. Okay. There are much more other aspects. If you talk about the manufacturing, then again, you also get a higher reliability, increased productivity. Okay. Another one is there, accuracy as well as your quality. Quality improves a lot. Okay. With that of the automation, you can also have an online inspection there that actually segregates. For example, if you uh, see the uh, Coca-Cola or the any other soft drink, uh, soft drink bottling plant. Okay, you have there is actually a person sitting to see if any bottle is cracked, and second to see that you must have heard uh, in your childhood the cases that some some uh, foreign objects are actually uh, formed in uh, or found inside the bottle. Okay, so that generally happens in tens and thousands. Okay, one or two bottles per tens and thousands. But again, they have to cross it. So when I visited a plant, I saw a manual person, okay, just uh, seeing every bottle, okay, that is coming out of the conveyor, they actually go through it, okay, to see if there is any damages or not, or, or if any foreign objects are there or not. Again, if you go to a more precise bottling plant, then there are different sensors that you apply for online monitoring, okay. So all those things improves your production quality. Okay, so again, the need for automation, uh, you most of your people have rightly guessed it. So the various points that are there in the need for automation, you have said as reliability, and again, the increase of production, 
then again your uh, accuracy all those things would be be taken care of okay so it's good that uh, you have remembered something from uh, your previous lectures then we come back to the different types of automated systems okay the first one being your semi automated and the second one being your fully automated okay so uh, semi automated what is it it actually performs a portion of the work cycle again let us take an example so uh, you have a washing machine isn't it it is uh, there are two categories if you go to buy a washing machine they say okay this is a semi automated one and this is a fully automated one so what are the functions of a semi automated they say the washing is automatic okay and then there is a manual intervention in that to what what is the manual intervention you have to take the or you have to put the clothes from the wash tub to the spin tub and then you have to again set the timer put all the uh, spinner cap and then close that spin tub and then put the timers to do it so that is a semi auto what is that it is doing a portion of the cycle one cycle is your say washing the clothes cycle and the other one is your drying cycle so again some portions are automated whereas the exact transfer of the this from one system to the other portion or from one cycle to the other cycle all that are not there similarly the setting up the times and all those things they are again done manually so that is a semi automated systems when you called about fully automated in a fully automated washing machine what is there you just put in your clothes put on the detergent if you just uh, just put the detergents in the detergent cap or the detergent space that is there you close just open the water you set the timer wash timing and the temperature and you leave it so the entire washing of the clothes okay the uh, number of times of rinsing of the clothes with different uh, cycles of the water that it actually takes and washes the clothes and then finally it dries the clothes and then that is your finally after drying it just opens up in some model to model they also dry it completely using a in built heater to it okay so that is a fully automated but again as i told you the definition of fully automated systems okay is a still way for example if you take the case of a semi automatic washing machine okay 30 or 40 years back when people used to mostly wash all those laundries with the hand that time when these machines came out okay that time what did it call it was called as automated washing machines right what did you do because that time the portion of the cycle that they thought they have automated that is the cleaning cycle or the washing cycle that they had automated and then people have called it a automated washing machine but then again the more and more amount of manual interventions you reduce again you redefine what is automation then again when people realized the uh, washing cycle as well as the cleaning cycle they all can be again integrated into one okay and all those manual interventions can be removed then came your what we call today as a fully automated but again i reserve my statement calling it to be a fully automated machine why what what ideally do you think should happen to our clothes what ideally do you think when you call about the automatic fully automated system see uh, we are humans we always try to again long for more and more thing that we can get okay so i as a just say a person if i want to call it a fully automated system what i would say i just dump my clothes on a place that is there okay then if the clothes okay so if i have a number of clothes say that is collected for over 2 to 3 days so i place a mechanism that actually senses the clothes weight so when the clothes weight becomes more than 3 kg or 4 kg the clothes will directly go into the wash tub okay without me putting any detergent okay uh, so there must be a detergent stand from where i just put in a kg of detergent from there it will just pick up say around 100 grams to 200 grams of detergent and the timer would be set up depending upon something someone maybe or some mechanism would be there to scan the dirtiness level of the clothes and then the timer would be set finally the, it would be washed dried and even after drying what i would be requiring is that i get the clothes pressed and back onto my closet right 
I mean, see, this is my definition of fully automatic. Okay, so suppose in the future, down 10 to 20 years or 50 years down the line, if a system comes, then again, the present fully automatic system would be known as a semi-automated washing machine. And that system, what I'm actually imagining right now, that would be called as a fully automated. Still, still I deserve my statement. Why? What are the manual? Can you just remove the manual intervention? No. Still, in that system also what I have described right now as an ideal system, even in that system, the putting of the surf okay, or your detergents and your other portions, for example, once it has dried and ironed, again, taking back from the iron clothes back to the closet and again dumping these clothes and again three or four parts more in the between, they are all again manually intervened. So automation or a fully automated system, that is why I said the def definition if you see here, it is what? reduced human intervention. If you see here, the second point in the automation, technologies that reduce human intervention in the processes. Okay, it is not saying it replaces. It does replace in some part, but again, there has to be some amount of human intervention there. Okay, there ideally there is nothing to be called as fully automated. Fine. So this was just a broad view of your automation systems. Okay, the more logical and that uh, different, uh, for example, automation system that uh, we generally study in our textbooks and all those things are your typical system that we are going to discuss right now. It is actually fixed automation or sometimes known as your hard automation. Then your flexible automation. Okay, the other part. And then there is also a known as your third automation category it is known as a programmable or your soft automation so again we will go through these types of automation okay so if you talk about the fixed automation it is a sequence of processing operations is fixed by the equipment configurations okay then the, again there are simple operations that here it is doing so these are actually ba based or uh, these are actually done for a mass production systems Okay, where the your quantity that you are going to produce is very, very high. Most of the machines are sophisticated and they are special purpose machine. For example, if there is a pick and drop system, okay, then again that uh, system, it is, it is only doing one operation that it is picking a object from one place and dropping it and it is doing it over and over again and only that system it is doing it for maximum number of operations that you can get from that in a minimum amount of time okay so these are generally for the large scale production if you see the uh, for example the second point it says sequence of simple operations for example if you have four operations you are going to pick up one object do some amount of operation there and drop it here okay so for this entire three tasks we'll be having three separate individual systems one is only doing the duty of picking up and placing at station b Another operation is taking place at station B and the third operation is again taking place at operation C. What can also be done with a single, say for example, if you just apply a robot in an assembly plant. So that robot work is to pick up from here, take it to the station B, perform some operation there, okay, say and then drop it to the third station. So that can be in a place of a normal, your soft automation or your other flexible manufacturing system. But for a fixed automation, one robot will be there only to pick up that object and place it at station B. Then whatever operation is going at station B that would be taken care of by a second uh, robot in, a, in one case or in other case it would be again done by some other uh, operations there and then there would be a third system that is to be placed on the station C. So again these operations are taking place at a frequent operations okay at a, a frequency that is much 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 higher than a normal automation. So that is why because of these special purpose machines, the initial cost is very, very high. Most of the equipments are custom engineered to do a particular amount of operation. Production rates are exceptionally high. And of course, if you talk about flexibility, we have minimum flexibility here. For example, if you want, okay, so this is a production, say I'm talking about the batch production. If suppose I want to say, okay, now I have started to manufacture a product A. So I want to just replace it with product B, but product B has two or three different processes before it can be actually called a product or before it is finalized. 
then again that changes you cannot do it in the fixed automation type why because doing that would again be rewiring or resetting up the entire setup again okay so that is the disadvantage of the fixed automation second one is your programmable automation or your soft automation it is known as as the name suggest you can actually program a single component okay to do or a single uh, uh, say assembly or a single uh, uh, single component in one assembly line to do multiple functions okay so for example in one operation uh, for product a manufacturing it is doing say suppose welding in that or it is just uh, say for example you are welding so in the second operation it can again uh, have a different attachment to it and it can do the soldering portion or in one place if it was picking up or if it, if it is a following a trajectory from a to b for manufacturing of a second product again it can easily go from a to c or d depending upon how easily you can reprogram the route to suit the manufacturing of product b or c or d okay so these production equipments are designed with the capability to change the sequence of operation and to accommodate accommodate different product configurations okay so basically these are actually suitable for your batch manufacturing where you have batches of product okay so there you have your programmable operation again the operation sequence is controlled by a program the typical features is high investment in general purpose equipment because those should be a programmable equipment production rate is low because most uh, there are some amount of time that is lost okay during your uh, reprogramming of these uh, entire setup or the assembly lines but then they have the flexibility to deal with the product change and they are most suitable for the batch production the third category we have flexible automation it sits somewhere between your hard automation and your soft automation or your programmable automation and your fixed automation okay so again so it will have a mix and match of both the properties okay it is basically an extension of a programmable automation product variety of parts again you cannot get a variety to the scale of what you get in a programmable automation but again you can have some variety as compared to that of a fixed automation however the change over times are low as compared to that of the programmable automation no production time lost in setting up the reconfiguration one example of this is actually your fms that is your flexible manufacturing system those of you all who are from the manufacturing domain you are going to read this uh, when you go into your third year or that so it is basically the uh, whenever we are talking about cnc machines for example a machine that is making one part of it okay so again the exact utilization of that, those machines are very very less because most of the time the shift is only of 8 hours and so you run the machine for 8 hours and the next again 12 hours is very very ideal or the uh, next uh, say 14 hours or 12 hours is very very much ideal okay so what you do you have a flexible manufacturing system where you have your pellets okay from where you have your uh, all your work materials that are placed there you have your systems or your assembly lines okay that conveyor belts that actually takes the product from this uh, pellets and then feed it to the uh, cnc machines and then once the product has been manufactured it takes the finished product and store it back onto the rack again okay and so once you teach this entire thing they operate seamlessly day and night without any manual intervention okay again see why they are saying no production time is lost in setting up it so suppose uh, you have a tool that is doing a machining operation okay so if you can govern okay or if you can just predict when the tool is about going to fail or if you can predict okay now in the next operation i require this tool and if there is a system that is actually being uh, designated to bring a tool from the tool tool room and uh, put it in the tool turret so that Uh, the tool can be changed at the correct amount of time then again no production time is lost up even if you are setting up for example say from a drilling operation to a milling operation all those things you can do by just selecting the correct tool from the tool turret okay so one uh, example of that is a flexible manufacturing systems again system can produce a uh, various mixes of parts typical features would be high investment for again the custom engineered equipments 
continuous production of a mix of products the production rate is somewhat in between okay and then again you have the flexibility to deal with the product designs and variations so uh, in this picture you can see uh, the graph between the variety and the quantity the programmable automation fits into the left upper corner where you have a lot of variety okay and less quantity the fixed automation fits into the right bottom corner where you have your high quantity whereas less variety and flexible automation somewhat in between the two okay when you compare the uh, variety as well as the quantity with respect to your programmable automation and your fixed automation okay so what would be your automation principles and strategies okay before you actually uh, deploy any of these into a, a shop floor or any other place so suppose if somebody tells you okay to you have to automate this process or if you have to automate my assembly lines then what would be your approach okay so i would always say automation is not always the right answer for a given production situation okay for this i would just give you one uh, very good example i was actually going through a video of the production of a uh, mercedes sports car is there okay uh, its model is sls amg g3 gt3 basically okay so in this type of car you basically have a gullwing doors okay you must see doors that actually just open like this over so you basically have a normal doors then you have a scissor doors in a sports car and then you have a gullwing doors the doors that actually open upwards okay so the body in white what is a body in white this is another terminologies of a entire chassis that has been just been painted okay and it is being rolled into the assembly line for the assembly of different parts okay so uh, this body in white actually is fitted with those gullwing doors now see when the doors are open okay it is just open upwards like this so before if you have just gone through the video also that i have set you okay so in that you can see they are putting the central cockpits there okay and all those engines and equipment and different door pads there so till when your all the hydraulic systems have not been placed in this these gull doors okay in the body in white has to remain in the upward position okay when the entire body in white is getting rolled over the assembly line so i was shocked to see while the entire system was completely automated and you had different uh, types of okay uh, automation to it you know what did they do to just hold those things upward those doors before the hydraulic system were fitted into it they just used a typical rubber band okay so they used a rubber band and they just put it across those three doors so that it actually just comes across this door and it prevents them from falling it downwards okay and then when all the hydraulic system and all those things were placed into this only then they just remove the rubber band for it so even i was just shocked to see a an assembly line where almost 90 to 95 percent automation is there they are actually using a rubber band to just hold the gullwing doors in its initial position until unless the hydraulic system to lift those doors are not fitted into it okay so you have to see whether we are actually going into the right part and whether this step has to be needed or not to be automated not all the steps are to be used for automation so again there are three approaches for dealing with the automation projects first is the usa principle okay that is understand simplify and then automate the third is a different strategies for automation and the third a fourth uh, sorry second one was the strategies for automation and the third one is your automation migration strategy what is migration strategy suppose you have a system that is not automated till now so how will you just automate it uh, will you go directly to a complete automation system or what you would do you would automate it in a step by step procedure because see uh, the company would be skeptical in putting in so much amount of money there okay it has to get the return so initially what they do they say few steps may be automated okay if you can convince uh, if you are an automation engineer and if you can convince the uh, industry people okay that okay first let us do with the automation of these many portions only so once you get the uh, return from that and then once you see that okay this is successful you can actually migrate it to your entire shop floor or the entire industry so there has to be a certain migration strategy that is to be followed because see investments to make a system 
automated is very very high fine so we'll first go with the usf principle it is a common sense approach to automation and your process improvement where the letter u stands for understanding the existing process the letter s simplifying the process and the letter a once you do the understanding and the simplification then you automate the process okay so in understanding the process what are the answers that you have to look for after going through the process you actually have to see what are the inputs parameters to it okay so how many inputs so whenever i talk about inputs i actually what should come into your mind sensors right because on the basis of these inputs you will be actually triggering a output and your output would be your a normal case what you have studied as far as till now it should be for actuators to do some some amount of work so you will be again counting the number of inputs your outputs what exactly happens between the input and the output only then your logic for controlling your those input outputs or different components for that would again take place then what is the function of the process when you talk about the function again what are you actually going to do maybe you are actually trying to calculate the load it is going to bear for example if there is a system in which a cylinder is extending to do a certain function so what is the load it is carrying in one condition it may be that the uh, when the cylinder is extending the load it is bearing is only 10 newton in one case it may be 100 newton in one case or in other case it may be your 1000 newton so you are actually doing for example if you are doing a punching or a pressing operation forging then again the load would be very very high as compared to some other applications where you are just trying to press something else right again uh, how does it add value to the product that you will be studying then what are the sequence of operations because all your output devices you will be again controlling based on what sequence do you need fine so that you are first understanding process then what you have to do you have to actually simplify the process that is you have to generate the answers to the following queries what is the purpose of each step and the transport okay you have to again uh, question yourself is this step necessary or can this step be eliminated right because see, if you are eliminating one or two step again you are saving a lot fine then again you have to see whether this step is the most appropriate for the technology that we are using how it can be simplified and if the steps cannot be ignored can it be combined can two or three steps can be combined to form a single step again that would again reduce your cost a lot so once you evaluate and then you simplify then the third step would be go for the automating the entire process okay then your strategies okay so this is almost the same that if you see the specialization of the operations for example special purpose equipment to perform one operations with the greatest possible efficiency you uh, do this for the fixed automation okay then again uh, the simultaneously operation doing two or three jobs at a time to reduce the processing time this is generally done in a assembly plant where you have a lot of operations that is going on can you just uh, guess the uh, there was an uh, can you just guess the normal production time of uh, say uh, the maruti suzuki plant is there in uh, haryana so can you guess what is a, a time which is actually spent to produce one car any guesses <laughs> there was an article in times of india okay when there was a labor strike at the haryana plant of maruti suzuki the article title was gone in 52 seconds or 56 seconds i exactly cannot remember but gone in 52 or 56 seconds that means the entire process okay to assemble the car when it rolls out from the assembly line was in 56 seconds you could actually produce the entire cars why because you have a series of operation that is actually going so see uh, once the conveyor belt okay once the entire equipment comes from the first end to the last end of the conveyor belt then if you count every 56 seconds you are actually rolling out one car okay so that means if one someone is fitting the 
uh, what would be the minimum amount or the maximum amount of time that every person is getting in the entire assembly line to finish their own job that would be 56 seconds right so whatever operation that is taking place in it okay it was the maximum amount of time that the labor was getting was 56 seconds so again the labor complained there okay that this time should be increased because it is putting a lot of stress to us so if you can see the number of operations that are actually simultaneously happening on a car okay so it is less than a minute that is why the production capacity of that runs into a some thousands in one month if you see the production line okay then again the integration of the operations for example linking of several workstations together so if you have one workstation and this then again you link them and when you link them what you require you require a material handling or storage that is actually taking place for example once a goods has been manufactured then there will be something we will be taking that finished product from station a to station b so that further operation can be done on the station b so you must have your material handrage uh, material handling and your storage portion of it then again if you add to the that your online inspection okay that is again this uh, generally comes when you talk about something related to manufacturing where again you can propose some corrections if you can actually online monitor your products or the quality of your products then finally in today's topic we are going to go for the what should be your automation migration strategy so in the phase one, you have your manual production using a single station manned cells. All the uh, uh, cells are manned, okay, and they all are working independently. There is no connection or there is no linkages between uh, different types of cells. What you do in the phase two, you have an automated production systems, okay, where again the stations are singly station manned, but they are all again working independently. So station wise, what you are doing, you are actually making the production automation, but again, there is no connection right now still between different types of stations. Okay. That I will again be making clear in the just next diagram. Then on the third phase, you have an automated integrated production using multi-station automated systems with automated material handling systems. If you see this figure, okay. So in the first picture, that is the phase one. Okay, if you see, so uh, this is a worker here, you have your manual workstation in this portion, then this is a manual workstation, again, these are your, the red color shows your handling and the work in process and the transfer of all these things are all again controlled by manually. So even the transfer is manual as well as your workstation is completely manual. If you see the phase two, what is happening, you have an automated production systems okay this unit again this is also again automated so your workstations are actually automated whereas your handling is still manual between this auto uh, between these automated workstations if you see your third phase here here your workstation as well as your handling is also automated okay so that means the moment a product comes here okay at this product then again, uh, one operation is done at this, suppose, say, uh, workstation A or the first workstation. Once that is completed, it goes back to the second workstation or goes forward to the second workstation. Then again, some amount of operation is being done here. And then it finally shifts to the third workstation. So if you have a three uh, workstation type of process here, then uh, a product involving three steps. So this would again be completed in uh, these uh, number of steps where your workstations as well as your handling plant of the, all of them are done manually. In the video that I had shared recently, okay, just uh, here, if you must be seeing that the entire chassis, once the robot does all those uh, soldering and all your spot welding processes, okay, then again you must be seeing that the entire chassis or the body in white is getting moved to the other station, if you look closely. Okay, so that shifting is again what is known as your uh, handling, okay, and that can be one in, in a normally uh, or in an unautomated plan, it can be a manual handling and then completely automated that can be again an automated handling systems. So uh, with this, uh, I just stop today's lecture. We'll continue with that again in the next lecture.